Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel once again and today on a road to AWS we will continue from where we left yesterday. We have created our AWS EC2 instances and in today's episode we will see much more fun ways to connect to SSH using Windows and using Linux or Mac and we'll look at some of the favorite tools that I have that I wanted to share with you. So without wasting any more time let's get started. The last thing what we had done is we had created our own AWS EC2 instance. So it's quite fun, isn't it? So I would like to create once again one more new instance for you guys so that we can continue with the flow. And I'll tell you the ways we can connect to this instance uh, using the SSH protocol with the ways that we have for Windows and Mac. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll create our instance or we'll launch an instance now. So what we are going to do is we are going to follow the steps that we had uh, followed last time as well. So I'll go ahead and select the Amazon Linux to AMI and I'll select the T2 micro that's the free tier eligible and uh, I'll see the configuration instance. Everything is same. I'm not going to change anything. So the tag that I'll add is first is name and uh, this is the one that we will be using it. So uh, next we need to configure the security group. I'll use the by default security group that is already available. Okay, so SSH to my machine. I'll add the name as a description here so um, we can identify this easily so yeah just i'll click on launch i'll create a new key pair so the key pair name is this and i'll just download it and just you can just launch the instance right now so once you have done all these things you will be able to see the screen your instances are now launching so in a few minutes you'll be able to use these instances as well so this is the instance list that we have and uh, i have created the new instance now so you can see the public IP that we have here is obviously displayed 13.126.142.119 and the security group it's launch wizard one that we had specified the key pair name as well and the owner name basically the pytholic name that I had for the owner so it's obviously here. So if you're currently using Windows 10 like me then uh, you can go to the PowerShell and you can just check whether you have SSH enabled or not. So if you get this SSH and you get a lot of options like this then uh, you have as such and you can go to the uh, command prompt as well and check the same so if you get the same and both of them then uh, your sh is enabled and if you get something like sh command not found or something then uh, probably you don't have sh enabled on your machine maybe you are using an older version of windows uh, but now what we are going to do is we are going to connect to this machine uh, so on windows 10 what we are going to do is we're going to just type ssh then the username and the ip address so the username for the amazon linux ami 2 basically it will always be like ec2 hyphen user so you just need to type ec2 hyphen user and at the rate the ip address so i'll just copy the ip address and i'll paste it it is asking for us to basically trust this machine so what i'm going to do is i'll just trust it okay so it's permission denied because i haven't added the key that i had provided previously or i had downloaded that so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to associate that key and attached to this uh, particular execution command you need to give the option of hyphen i after hyphen i you need to just mention the path of that particular uh, file name so i have the file with me here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just copy the file path and i'm going to specify it here so i'm going to specify that uh, command uh, hyphen i the path of the file of that particular sh key and then the username at the rate the ip address okay so no such host known so what i'm going to do i'm just going to iterate to that particular folder path that i have okay so i'll just execute the command once again so what it is selling is unprotected private key file so what you need to understand is whenever you're trying to uh, access a particular uh, sh instance using sh uh, protocol the key that you are using for connecting it to the, uh, the machine using sh should be protected properly so what is you what you're going to do is you're going to protect it so we'll see what are the permissions available for that file that we have so this is the properties of that particular file. So you're going to click on uh, security. So you can see here that these are the few users that are already there. They are able to actually manipulate the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the permission for modifying this file only to myself and for my user itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to remove all the permission from other people that are currently using it. So I'll uh, just remove this, remove this 
So what you, it is telling is you cannot remove system because this object is inherited permissions from its parent. So we will remove the inheritance first. So you click on this one, click on disable inheritance, remove all inheritance. I am going to add myself. So now once I have this, I can just add myself. I will give myself the full control and uh, click on this. So now only I have the access. Okay, so what I did is I removed the inheritance from all of them and just I added myself. So once you have done this, you can click on apply, click on OK and that's it. That's what we need uh, to make it protected. And we are going to run the same command once again and it will work. Yes, see, we have successfully logged into the machine. And if you do the same thing using command prompt also, it will work. So I'll open the command prompt and if I type here, so now I'll execute the same command again and you will be able to access the instance. Yes, it's quite fun, isn't it? See, I'm able to access it. So these are the two ways that I actually told you right now. And this is pretty important when you're using Windows 10 or Windows basically to change the permission. This is really important. Most of the times we actually don't know how to do this. But now with this tutorial, maybe it will help you. It has helped me as well. So if you really liked it, then hit the like button right now. But moving forward, but if you're using any older version of Windows, then you can probably use PuTTY. To connect to your linux machine so this also helps you connect uh, to the linux machine using ssh so what you're going to do is uh, once you have installed pate uh, you see here host name or ip address here is where we will be entering the host name ec2 user at the rate the ip address that we have so i'll go back here and i'll copy the ip address i've copied it and what i'm going to do is i'll just go ahead and paste it so once i've done this i'll just give it a name ec2 instance okay and i'm going to save it so if you see the key that we can download it before it is a pm file but we need to have a secure shell key that basically is compatible with the putty so we will create a putty compatible file so for that i need to open the putty keygen so you can go ahead and check for putty keygen so once you get the keygen what you need to do is you need to just load the private key that you have go to the desired folder that you had already placed your file click on all types okay select the drop down and click all files and you can just select the ec2 key.pm file successfully imported foreign key okay to use this you need to just save it as a private key command and use it in putty zone format okay once you just click this then you can just save the private key so are you sure you want to save this key without a passphrase uh, to protect it yes i would definitely want to save it without a passphrase but if you want additional security basically you can add a passphrase to that but i'm not going to do it uh, so i'll just click on yes and i'll save it as ec2 hyphen key dot ppk or putty private key so once i've saved it what I'm going to do is I have selected this. So you see the categories here, right? Go to the connections part. You see SSH, click on this and expand it. And you see auth. Here, what you're going to do is you're going to browse for that file that we had just created. Click on that and select open. Once you've done that, don't select or don't click on open right now. Go to sessions, click on EC2 and save it. Now, double click on this. See, it's as easy as and it's as simple as possible. So once you have done the part where you have converted that PEM file to PPK file, that's when you can use PuTTY. Because if you just import it and you try to run it, it will not work. The next tool that I wanted to share for Windows is Mobile Xterm. That's also a pretty neat tool. I have been using it uh, since a long time when I was working with Windows. But when I jumped into Mac, I started using Terminus. So here it is also a very simple and pretty clean setup that you have. So once you have installed Mobile Xterm, I'll give you the link in the description below. You can just download it as well. So you get to have a very good interface here, the graphical interface. So what you're going to do is if you want to create a session or a SS session or a remote session, you can just click on this click on SSH okay then enter the same way that you had entered in putty ec2 hyphen user at the rate the IP address I'll just copy it once again 
so IP address so and what happens here is you can either give it here or you can just specify the username by default that it will be logged into so specify username and you can just type it here and you can assign the port as well and you need to mention the private key here so you need to go to advanced ssh and then you see a use private key option click on this checkbox to activate it and browse for the file so go to desktop means i have my file on the desktop so i'll just use the private key okay so once these settings have been entered then you are good to go you can just click ok and yes we have connected to the ec2 instance using mobile xterm so this is pretty neat actually you will have a session here and you can as well drop files and download files as well using the option this is pretty cool to have something like this and the best part about mobile xterm is that you get a local instance where you get to play with uh, a local instance of a virtualized Linux machine. So if I type here ls, it will work. So this is pretty neat. So welcome to Mac everyone. So on Mac, I'm using the by default terminal that Mac provides me. And I'm just going to execute the same command that I had executed, but I'll use the sh command here, uh, which I executed on Windows 10 on the partial. So let's go ahead. And I'll provide the destination for that. And I'll add the private key. Just, I'm going to allow it and the username ec 2 have user i'll copy the ip address and i'll paste it okay yes i'm going to allow this oh okay we face the same problem here protected unprotected private key file so what we are going to go is we are going to change the permission for the private key that we had and we are going to allow it for access only to myself so i'll iterate to the file and i'll check the permissions ls hyphen altr and uh, yes, it has write access for others and groups as well. So I'm going to change it. I'll ch mode 0400 and allow it to just myself. The read permission are only for myself. So once you have set the permissions and this is pretty good to go, then you can just execute the same again. And voila, I think we should be able to connect. Yes, we are. And let's move on to the next one. So the next important tool and my one of my favorite tools that I wanted uh, for you guys to also use was Terminus. I have been using it since a long time, once since the time that I have been using Mac. So you can just type in Terminus and you can download it. I'll provide the download link in the description below. You can download it and what you get with Terminus is a beautiful uh, UI. So first of all, you need to continue without account. So not a problem. You don't need to log in into this. So once you enter the console, what you're going to see is a beautiful UI. And uh, the way we need to add is click on new host and add the label for the instance that you want. It's like giving the name for that particular instance and just add the IP address. Now you don't need to worry about groups. Leave that come down and you have mentioned SH. That's cool. Port 22 is by default. You just need to give the username ec2-user and you need to pass the key, the sh key that we had. Click on plus keys and then give it a label like ec2-key or something and no passphrase, just browse the file. Once you have done that, just you need to click on save. So that's it. And uh, Terminus provides you a beautiful theme as well. Like I will be going with the basic theme and that's it. Nothing more to do. Just click on save. So once you have this, just click on connect with sh, accept it. That's it. That's it. You are good to go. You are able to connect to the Linux AMI. So I hope this video was as informative and as enjoyable as it gets. So if you did enjoy, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, what are you doing, man? Please subscribe to the channel. And until then, signing off.